Welcome to the March the 17th, 1998 taping of It Happened in Grand Prairie. As we bring you the history of our city and some of the people that are very important, they have made history in the past and some are even continuing making history today. And so is the case with our history tape number 331. We have two wonderful folks that have been very good to Grand Prairie and its environs and that is Mr. and Mrs. Walt Wagoner. Walt, welcome to the set. Good to be here. <laughs> good to be here, yes. I knew you'd tell the truth, finally. <laughs> and Juanita Wagner, we're just really delighted that you're backing him up, and, uh, and, and you saw that he got here today. Yes. That's wonderful. Yes. I want to thank you all for agreeing to share your lives with us and to tell us a little bit more about the, the real Walt Wagner's How's that? And Walt, with your permission and looking into your camera, we'd like for you to start our interview by giving us your genealogy. Tell us anything about the famous people that are in your background and your mother and father and famous grandfathers or someone that was influential in your life. Well, I don't have any gunfighters or any <laughs> really exciting Western. I'm originally from St. Louis. From St. Louis. And that's uh, uh, from the city itself. I joined the Navy in 1957. No, I graduated in 57, joined the Navy in 58, and I was at the age of 19. From there, went to Great Lakes, and uh, after boot camp, just like most other sailors, I wanted out. I, said, <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever make a career of it. Uh, went to school in Port Wyneme, and of all things, it was uh, as a draftsman. Uh, I'd had four years in high school, so I just carried over. From there, I went to Washington, D.C. and worked at uh, the Photographic Interpretation Center for two years. It was a, an intelligence type of uh, command. From there, it was uh, down to uh, Jacksonville, and uh, it was uh, admiral staffed. And all I had to do was uh, graphics type work. Uh, from there, from Jacksonville, I uh, re-enlisted in the TAR program. Mm -hmm. And from there, we, went, we, we were going to be regular Navy. We were going to stay, stay with the Navy. I went to Olathe, of all th Olathe Kansas after Jacksonville as a, as a journalist. And I remember the, the newspaper there, the name of it was the Air Scoop. And for, I think it was a year and a half, I was at Olathe. And we left just before the, the base itself closed down. All right. <laughs> From there, went to uh, Washington, D.C. Back to Washington. Washington, D.C. I have a copy of some of the papers that, uh, if, uh, I don't know if you want to see them right now. Yes. But this was one of them, the Nartopics. This was the paper at that time, a little tabloid type. We edited it. And that was the first uh, editorial work that right. you had done. Yeah, well, this is, and all of this was in Kansas? No, this, this was in Washington. That was in now. Washington. Yeah, okay. this is Washington. This is the Naval Air Reserve Topics. <laughs> this was a reserve, a reserve command. TARS, Training and Administration of the Reserves. There's a big difference of, uh, between the TARS and regular Navy. Oh, I see. These, the TAR people, go only to uh, shore installations. So in all, I've got 23 years in the Navy, never been aboard a ship. The only time they got me aboard a ship was when uh, we'd take a, uh, a, a VIP cruise down mm -hmm. to, uh, to uh, Pensacola. Then we'd go out and watch uh, carrier uh, landings on the Lexington. Oh, And yeah. that was exciting. That was exciting. We usually went out for a day at a time. And I always told them this was a nice place to visit, but I, I don't want to stay here. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to... Uh, stop you for just a moment. We're okay. going to backtrack. We're going to get your parents' names now. Uh, where you were born and the name of your mother and father. Mother and father is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Walter J. Walter J. Wagoner. Okay. And I am the uh, senior. You are the uh, I'm senior. The, uh, I'm, the, uh, I'm not a senior, but I mean, I'm the, I'm, I'm the oldest. You're the older of all of the children? Yes, we have three, and you're, three boys. You had three boys, and give me your mother's name and her maiden name. Edna Marie. Okay, Edna Marie was your mom, and yes. uh, would you like to name the other two boys? Uh, well, there was Kenny, he's passed away. All right. Uh, 
And uh, then I have a young brother, Gary. Young, Gary where, where is Gary? Gary's still in St. Louis. He works uh, as a maintenance, uh, head of maintenance over in uh, Illinois for one of the factories there. Oh, that is great. That's wonderful. All right. And, and uh, you went to school where in St. Louis? Well, it started off at Coronelette. All right. Do you have a favorite teacher or someone that was real good to you when you were and in I, elementary gee, school? I can't, even, I can't even remember half of them now. That's all right. <laughs> no. 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 They weren't imp you, you weren't as impressionable then as you were when you got to Kansas mm. writing papers and all that good stuff. Right. All right. But what uh, school did you graduate from at high school? Cleveland. Cleveland. Cleveland High School. Okay. Cleveland. And it's, it's since gone also. The school is still there, but it's, it's no longer a high school. Uh-huh. All right. And uh, is there something to tell me? We attended his 40th high school reunion oh. in August. Oh, oh you that did? Was, that was and he saw a lot of his high school friends okay. and a uh, former teacher or coach. And they were mm -hmm. quite successful. Was there a teacher or a coach or someone really important in high school that really One gave you a send-off? passed away by the swimming coach. I was on the swimming team. Yes. And uh, Doc Singer. He was real impressionable. Yes. Uh, he Encouraged he, you a lot. He, yes. Great. We, we won three city championships and one state oh. under him, which we had, a good, we had a good team. Oh, that was great. And then uh, after you finished high school, you said you enlisted right on into the Navy, into and then the you Navy. gave us all of that wonderful sojourn of all of this good stuff. Never been on a ship except uh, for a VIP cruise, but you're yes. do always doing good stuff in the Navy. Well, as a TAR, I was from one air station to the next. I see. Mm -hmm. And that was what was interesting. Were you always, always interested in, in editing and uh, or what brought you to that because you started out drafting things? Well in Jacksonville we had a uh, the com public affairs All right. originally in the Navy was called command liaison. Huh. <laughs> and the command liaison was worked very close with recruiting. Okay. So this uh, particular recruiter head of recruiting said, well, here's a guy we get in as a journalist and we can use him as a draftsman. Uh-huh. That's the way the Navy will do you, isn't <laughs> and, it? All right. And once I got into, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, to that billet, I had a boss that said, you're not a draftsman, you're a journalist. Okay. So you better learn how to do your job. So, so it, was a, it was kind of a learning process. Mm -hmm. Well, the graphics, how did that fit into uh, uh, your being able to be a journalist? Recruiting brochures and things like I that. I see. Yeah, okay. Was, uh, so you designed yeah, all of this wonderful stuff? Yeah, local. Yeah, local. Lo local uh, okay. And they, they would go out to college campuses and they would go mm -hmm. out uh, to recruit uh, uh, future aviators. Yes. And it was, uh, it w it was interesting. But uh, the boss finally said, he said, he's a journalist. And, uh, and so you were forced into journalism, really. And now it, it's the peak of your life. And, yes. and you're one of the yes. best in the Southwest. Well, I don't know about that, but we, yes. we work hard at what we're doing now. Yes, you I, do I, work hard at what you're doing. We're going to get to some of these other things in a minute. but I also do my own photographs. Oh, yeah, you do your own photographs? Yes. Oh. I would know that you would. All right, uh, I'm going to hold you in abeyance a minute. I need to uh, get Juanita up to snuff here and get her, uh, get her genealogy and everything. Juanita, look out into your camera and tell us about the real Juanita and your parents' names and if you have siblings you want to mention. Oh, boy. Um, my parents live on Oak Cliff. All right. Uh, Alan and Alice Hargis. And I'm the oldest of six children. Oh, great. And three of us... Four of us live in this area. I have a brother, Jack, up in Coppell, a sister, Joan, who teaches in the Dallas Independent School District. She lives in Carrollton. A uh, brother lives in Roanoke. Uh, he works with airplanes. And I um, have a sister in Houston and a sister in Massachusetts. You want to name the two in Houston and Massachusetts? A sister in Houston is Mary. Okay. And sister in uh, Massachusetts is Elizabeth. Now, see, you've given them all due credit, and when they see this tape, well, they won't say, why didn't you name me? <laughs> yeah, way to go. <laughs> and Juanita, uh, tell, and Jack. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your elementary, where you went to elementary school. And Well, I, my parents, my dad uh, was a carpenter. He all was right. retired. All he right. just had his 87th birthday last month. Did you give us their full name, both your mother and father? Alan and Alice. Mother was a okay. Shelton All right. uh, prior to marriage okay. to my daddy. They've been married 57 years. And so daddy built a house that they still live in. 
How wonderful. Over there, and uh, they live right off of the street where the movie Born on the Fourth of July was filmed. I see. And they used the elementary school, Margaret B. Henderson, mm -hmm. as the, uh, one of the schools in that movie. They had a parade down the street. Mm -hmm. Very interesting way they changed it uh, from the time we were growing up. Uh, I went to uh, Griner Junior High School back in the 50s. It's middle school mm -hmm. now, or it's an academy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sunset High School, and I know that you went to Sunset too. Yes, yes. But I was of the old, the vintage. The class well, I must of, be in the middle vintage. The class, of, <laughs> the class of 1938. And your class? 1960. 1960, yes. And Sunset has changed somewhat too. Yes, it has. All right. And uh, what, do you do, what did you do for a career after you got out of high school? I, I went to uh, East Texas State University, which is now Texas A&M University at Commerce. Yes. I've got a Bachelor of Science degree in uh, vocational home economics and promptly scouted around for a teaching position, found one in Corpus Christi, Texas. Corpus. How and wonderful. moved down there in 65, stayed to through 77, down there 12 years. And from that point, I decided I needed more education. I went to uh, Oklahoma State University for a master's degree in my first love, clothing and textiles. Mm -hmm. And uh, came back and got another teaching position, this time with Dallas. I was there 10 years. Okay, all right. And that's, that was my, my career until I married him. All right, tell me about wh where did you find Walt Wagner? Across the street from where I live. All right. We, we, we shared back doors almost. Yes. And uh, no. being single, I, I had a little dog to keep me company and uh, used to go out and jog or walk. Yes. And I would meet him on the street. Yes. And then I remember, I guess the first time we met was... Uh, I was jogging. Jogging, but to really meet him, it, we, I was walking my dog and he was going over to our pool. <laughs> and we stopped to talk. And yes. That's wonderful. So that's the way oh. it all started with us. Yes. And uh, do you have a family? Walt has three daughters. Oh, and right. his first wife died in 85. Uh -huh. And I said, I, I've kind of helped raise the girls, even though two of them were already married when we met. Well, and you're still uh, raising those that are married. Yeah, and the grandchildren. We, yeah. take, we take care of them. Oh. They're, they're great. That I is wonderful. Yeah, that was a stroke of luck for you, Walt Wagner. Oh, <laughs> next door and, uh, and, and a help meet like that that will help raise the, the, the children. That's great. All right. We're, gonna, we're going to leave you there, just married, taking care of kids. But I've got to get back to Walt because he has such a fabulous career that uh, in all of this journalism stuff. Uh, where are we now with you? You're, See, I think, I what think brought I you to the Dallas area in Grand Prairie? See, I think it was at Washington, D.C. All right. From Washington, D.C., uh, at Andrews Air Force Base in the North Topics, we went to uh, Whidbey Island. All right. Whidbey Island, Oak Harbor. And yes. that's where they had uh, the newspaper, The Islander. Yes. And I was the editor for The Islander. Well, I, I think it was the editorial advisor for the, I think I had somebody work for me that was the editor. I always made it nicer. You could run, yes. run him out there and do. Yes. And then from the, uh, Whidbey Island, came to uh, NAS Dallas. All right. And that's when we, came, the Sky Ranger. The Sky Ranger. The Sky Ranger, and uh, that, that's. The and, Sky Ranger at Navy Dallas, you came on board when? See, uh, it was in 74. 1974. <laughs> yeah. I think it was the summer of 74. 74. And you've been an editor of how many different military papers, including the one starting out in Kansas? Well, I'd say one, two, three, probably about seven. Uh, about five. seven. At least the station, seven. Station, yeah, yeah. All right. And, uh, and the Sky Ranger, when uh, Navy Dallas uh, really went into what I call receivership. Yes. 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 Was, yes. 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 Uh, uh, then uh, what happened to my Sky Ranger? Well, it, it is now over at Carswell. Uh, but you're, and it is still published as the Sky Ranger. As the Sky Ranger, and I'm surprised that they have not renamed it. I, I assume they will. Yes. Uh, may, they may carry it over, but it, to me, it, it's, it should be renamed okay. to reflect the new, uh, the new base, the new. So 74, 
uh, to 98. No, I, I, I was there from uh, 74 till 80. Till 80. I, I okay. retired in 80. You retired? I, I did a brief tour at uh, Willow Grove. Okay. But that was when the wife had cancer and I, I had to come back. Yes. And that's when we, I, I, I had a humanitarian and uh, uh, then I retired. I all got, right, uh, 1974 to 1980. Of all of the uh, papers that you put out for the Sky Ranger, is there one special or two specials that we can show and tell or well, something this, that's real exciting? That this is one. I came back. Uh, I got out of the, right. the Navy and of course I, I sold tires and I worked in a factory and yeah. I, and all, and I worked all in a photo stuff. lab yeah. and things like this. Then I, I went back to work for the uh, uh, Sky Ranger as a contract. Uh -huh. uh, and this is pretty interesting here. This fella here, if you can see him. Uh, is it this gentleman right yeah, here? This is the commanding officer here, but the fellow there, Mr. Powell, he was the one that built the Naval Air Station. And this was the 50th anniversary at the time. And he, uh, I got an interview with him, and he was a uh, uh, officer, but he was in construction. And he was assigned to come out here and start the Naval Air Reserve Base. It was called a NARB, okay. Naval Air Reserve Base. Okay, and that was with Hensley Field there and nothing Hensley, else? Hensley Field was there. You're Hensley right, yes. Field was there, and then so he just started building around Hensley. Correct. Okay. And well, what was so unusual is uh, he had such a problem getting labor, contract labor, to, yeah. to come and work mm -hmm. because North American was... Uh, getting everybody. It was getting everybody at the time, yes. so he couldn't get anybody uh, uh, to build the base. But uh, they got it done. And uh, about that time, the war started, uh -huh. and uh, the base became very important. Yes. As a, it was a major training uh, base for uh, uh, basic flight. It wasn't primary flight, it was basic flight. Basic flight. Uh, yes. Yeah. And he, uh, he, he did a good job. All right. <laughs> Show us some more papers that All you right. have. You have some more good stuff there. Well, Th that's an exciting one on that 50th anniversary. This is when the uh, president had visited at one time. And which president is that this? That was Bush. George That's Bush was George wife. Bush, okay. And landed at Navy Dallas. And did you get to interview them and cover all uh, of that? No, no. He, or did you just they get just to take used pictures? The, they, yeah, pictures, then they just used a, they just used it as a landing base. Did you, mm -hmm. can you phone it? I don't know if you can yeah. get in on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, show us some more of your work. Uh, let's, yeah, let me go through. These are all, we're going to show an early Sky Ranger. This oh. is during the war. I've never this seen was, one like that. That's 1944, 1944. August the 20th. This well. Was, uh, and, and the way they used to do the paper was pretty uh, archaic in that, that they, they would paste it down literally, yes. photograph it, and then, then run it. Then run it. And who was the editor during this time? Do you know, or yeah, does, should, it, does it even his say? His name should be in here. In fact, I'd, lo I'd love to interview him if he, if he was still around. Yes, well, if but you put I, his I name don't. out, well, maybe we'll find someone that knows the, the know editor. Name. And a lot of people do know him. No, at this time it was Dan Seaforth. Seaforth. Okay. Don't, don't know him. <laughs> don't know him, but we may find him, mightn't we? That would be a good interview for us, wouldn't it? And then during my tour, this type of publication was put out. It's a hard one. To, and it's a, it's now a, it's, that it's looks like, more, a little bit more professional. Yeah, it's, it's than an in-house, but this was all paced up also. It was paced up also. It was paced up and the photographs were done. Yes. And of all of the interviews that you've done over the years, probably, what do you think was the most exciting thing that you've ever done? Probably spider web. All right, and, tell me about Spiderweb. Spiderweb is uh, from Richland Hills right here. All right. And he, uh, he was a, uh, originally from Oklahoma, a small town, listed in the Navy as a career, and was at Pearl Harbor when it was bound. Oh, my. I have, a, I have a little write-up on him. Let me, yeah, I, I think, if you hold on a second. All right, we'll hold on, because we want to, find out about Spiderweb if we can, even though he is from Oklahoma. Well, he originally is Oklahoma. He lives in Richland Hills right now. All right. And uh, he was a, he became a World War ace. Uh-huh. Let me 
let me get the right to hold that for, for a second. And I have a little write-up on him. He was uh, quite a... Maybe quite we a can get a shot of that. He was sensible. also stationed here as a Navy chief. He was one of the few enlisted pilots. Uh, now, what was the difference in the Sentinel and the Sky Ranger? Well, the Sentinel, I, I'd done a feature on him. Uh, through the Sentinel, somebody somebody contacted. Let, let me give you just a All little. Right. Tell us about uh, Sky. This was the, mortally wounded. The ship was rolling to port, pushing through the small port side porthole. The sailor splashed into the water and in its silence below. But the need for air sent him kicking to the top. At the surface, he found two inches of oil. Shaking his head violently, he attempted to clear his vision of water and black oil. Looking around while struggling to tread water. He saw total devastation. Most of the ships burning, many settling or rolling to their sides. Even the water seemed on fire as oil burned it at its surface. Fire seemed to be spreading. Seeing a boat launch nearby moving slowly, pulling survivors from the water, he started toward it, but found another straight sailor struggling. Despite the difficulty of keeping himself afloat, he grabbed the man and took him in tow moving as best he could toward the approaching boat. The sounds of exploding ships, guns, firing, and screaming aircraft overhead were de deafening. Besides bombing, the aircraft were now strafing. He'd been spotted, and the spell launch moved alongside, and friendly hands reached down. When the life-saving sailor shouted for the men aboard to first take the man he'd taken in tow, he was informed that he'd, he was dead, part of his head missing. He was ordered to release the body. They were already overloaded. Mm. Now, <clears throat> this guy was aboard the Pennsylvania, and uh, it, w it was sunk there. I think it was the Pennsylvania. Uh, but anyway, he, this, he was aboard a battleship. And, and all of this was in Pearl Harbor? This was in Pearl. Yes. Now, later on, he would get his flight orders, and he'd go to Pensacola, earn his wings, and he'd return to the Pacific and become a fighter ace. So he, that, uh, the interview with him must have terrific. been tremendous. Oh, it was terrific. He shot down seven planes, and eight planes in one day, Spider did. And as I said, it was very interesting. Uh, I've also gotten to interview uh, people that have been on the Bataan Death March, other people that have uh, made miraculous escapes out of airplanes to be uh, with seven or eight crew, crew members, and they're the only survivor. Uh, to hear their stories, it's just, heart-wrenching. Yes. And usually they're, they're, these people have been captured uh, by the enemy and then somehow managed to survive. But getting to write about them uh, with... Exciting. Oh, I know that it is exciting. It is exciting. And that, that's what makes it good. Now, I've got, I've got to ask Juanita this. Right. Juanita, I know that you have a role in helping him with all of this writing mm -hmm. and editing and proofing and everything. What do you do to aid in a bet, Walt, in this very wonderful <laughs> endeavor? Well, besides sitting next to him all day long, <laughs> I do most of the typing for everything except his feature stories. Yes. And uh, I even, well now, I scan the photographs in and to the paper. But uh, I go with him on interviews and tape run the tape and then come back home and transcribe it yes. so that he can edit it down. And I proofread for him and we so kind of overlook it together. Y'all are a team, aren't we you? We are. Yes. You just are a she, team. She's right on. Yes. You, you ask what the difference, though, between the two newspapers. Yes. The, the Sentinel yes. used to be the Carswell Sentinel. So oh, it was right. the Air Force newspaper. And when the base closed, Stanley Cole took, yeah. had that paper then and he continued doing it with the aim at, toward the retirees. I see. As, as a main, uh, main goal. And veterans, yeah. And veterans. Yeah. And then he's also active duty oriented and anybody else in the military who would like to keep up with things. Mm -hmm. They get the Sentinel, but if you really want to know what's going on, the Sky Ranger is the one that uh, is for the on, joint on base, base now. Yes. On base. That's joint a joint publication. Yes. This is, this is done with paid advertising. Now, I know that you <clears throat> live in Grand Prairie, Texas. How long have you lived in Grand Prairie? Well, a bunch. 74. Since I moved in, in the same house. And I've been there 
ever since. All right, and um, how do you commute from here to the joint base to do all of this good stuff, or do you use computers or wireless or what? We have about three more minutes left on this interview, and I want to know how you get all this good stuff done. Well, we <laughs> we get a lot of uh, uh, phone-ins. People will say, hey, I got a, I got a person you've got to see. Just like and I have Buddy Boring correct. sitting out in the audience out here waiting for y'all to get a, off this interview. We get a lot of mail, too. Oh, uh, you do? We get a lot of uh, people that would mail uh, correspondence in that they say, we're going to get this in the paper. Right. A lot of announcements. What does it have to be about if, they, if someone wanted to mail something to you? Oh, anything retiree or senior citizen? Yes. Yes. Yes, we like uh, it. As long as it's Medical. military. No, not necessarily. We, we, we put things in our paper that senior citizens can benefit from. Okay. Uh, because a lot of the retirees are senior citizens. We're getting yes. there and we, yes. we're interested. Usually what interests us. We try to put in paper. Okay. We, we do have computers at home and we can do our work at home and uh, every other week. And on Monday he runs it over to Fort Worth. Yes. And they put it in their computers over there, and then we go back on Tuesday and proof it, make sure that the paper looks okay. They put the ads in it, and it goes out the next day. Do you have one of those, the sheets that we got this morning? Let's leave a number, too. Oh, yeah, we can show the... Uh, we, we need your magic telephone number in case someone yeah. has something like this. Uh, we're at 972... 972... 263... 263... 6051. 6051, and, and you take all good ideas, right? Yes, we do. All yeah. right. This is, the, this is the way we take it over, literally, and they look at it. All right. And uh, this is the finished sheets that we That's proofread. The proof that comes sheets. back to you. And then they put on negatives and send it out to be printed uh, each time. Well, I think that's wonderful. Walt Wagner, you and Juanita are just wonderful. I find you at every military uh, thing that I attend. You're always there with your camera when there is a retirement ceremony, when there's anything that's happening. Or are you going to be there at the very closing in September of yes. the Navy Dallas? There's an organization also... Uh, that that uh, may try to be there that uh, the NASDEC, <laughs> NASDESCA, but it's a group of old, uh, they meet annually. All right. And uh, it, it, it covers, I'd say, from uh, from 40s to the 60s, mm -hmm. all these people do. So all to try to get the gatekeepers. Them. The yes, gatekeepers. The gatekeepers. Um, I, I have, yes, that's good. we're just out of time. Y'all have been wonderful. This is so exciting. We could have done a two hour stint and, and I know you would have fainted if we'd have mentioned that. <laughs> Thank you, Walt Wagner. You're welcome. Juanita. Thank you, Ruthie. Y'all are wonderful. It's been a wonderful interview. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do.